was recording uh, over the three two leather tracks I made before. So. Oh, weird. I'll just cut all this out. Hey, Krista. Hey, Alex. <laughs> How's it going? Oh, good. Guess um, what? What? This is the third episode. Oh, my God. <laughs> if anyone's made it this far, I am... Applaud you. I, I was going to say very impressed. Oh, that <laughs> works, mean, too. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, thank you for coming this far. I'm um, excited. I'm excited because this topic was really interesting, and I started off pretty strong uh, doing a lot of research, research in a way, and then it kind of trickled off, but then Alex picked up the rest, and yes. she really brought it together this time. <laughs> I made up for the lack of my dragon research. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be so much better than dragons. Good um, topic, but yeah. I was weird that day. We're going to redo all of these in the future. Yeah, that's yeah, a good idea. I think so. Uh, how are you? I'm good. Good. Um, Tell us about it. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good day. Good. I had a day full of massages at the float tank studio I work at in Kennewick called Float Euphoria. Shout out to Float Euphoria. Oh, it's so awesome. If you've never floated, you need to go check it out. We should probably talk about floating sometime. That cause... has to be a topic. Yeah. Since I work at a float center. <laughs> we got this really cool wall. And, yeah, and it, one whole wall at the float center is a big coloring board. What? And we have coloring pencils all over it. So it's we have geo, geometric figures that you can color in after you're done floating or massage. Or a fairy wonderland. What the heck? Yeah. That is one of the most, like, I've never heard of that before. Like a color wall? Color wall. It's a, is it paper or what is it made of? It's like glass and then we put paper down so we can switch out the design when it's all colored and is, in. Is it like colored pencils? Or colored pencils. Could I bring crayons? No, because that's stupid. No. Oh my god. <laughs> it's not as precise. <laughs> no. I guess if you really wanted to and you I have was... crayons laying around in your car. I was joking. I don't. <laughs> I actually don't. I colored a really pretty fairy today. Oh, wow. <laughs> in between massages. <laughs> I'm pretty proud. That's like, you know, at restaurants when they put down the paper for kids to <gasps> just do the lawn. I love when they do that. And I, I'm like, yeah. oh yeah, it's for my daughter, Ryan. And mm. I'm over here like... Look at that cat. That's a good <laughs> cat I drew. <laughs> there was this place in Portland that did it at a bar. The entire bar is covered in brown paper. Oh my goodness. It was really cool. That's amazing. Also served as, you know, to spill your drinks on. <laughs> at least I did. So. A bit of both. It worked perfectly. And I drew all over it. How's your day been, Krista? It's been really productive. Uh, I... When you hear this episode, I would have already been to the Transition Festival in Eugene, but rise of now, when I'm talking about it, I'm going tomorrow. Ah! So it's going to be really cool. I've just been prepping for that, getting rave ready. You got a new nose ring. Yeah, I got it's a new nose ring. really pretty. I'm like super conscious of it all of the time, though. <laughs> I can't stop looking at it. I love it. It's probably not helping with your conscience, um, but I, had, I like it. I got my car serviced, and mm. this guy had to like talk to me about my car. I saw his eyes dart up and down from my <laughs> eyes to my nose ring, just like It's so pretty. Down. It's why. I love it, too. Um, it's definitely not a work one. This is like fun going out one. Festival nose yeah, ring. It is a festival nose I ring. I love it have my septum pierce if anyone was interested no one is and yes. no. <laughs> what else did i do oh deep cleaned my car Ooh, that's yeah. always nice there's something about having my car clean that to me means i'm successful i don't know why i'm good in life <laughs> yeah. i can see the floor the floor mats <laughs> the floor mats i take them out shake them off oh, i wipe nice. everything down and as long as i can do that like i can do anything life so. is good mm-hmm uh, the topic today, would you like to introduce it? Today's topic... Oh, we're going back and forth on picking topics. Yeah. So I picked this week's topic, and yeah. it's tarot cards. Woo tarot cards! I'm so excited, because it's a good topic. It's really kind of like... Um, everyone has like their own different opinion about tarot cards, but it's like a mysterious thing that once you Google search a few times, you learn everything about. You go in-depth. <laughs> so, yeah. 
It's really not, it's not scary either. That's like, kind of what I was, I was a little scared of it at first, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but not anymore. Even the scariest cards have kind of turned into positive cards. Mm-hmm. So It's very light, like positive. Yeah. Everything I read was good, good vibes, good energy. Mm-hmm. It's not like a Ouija board. Yeah. It's not devil work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, um... Who should start? What have you got? You start. You are telling the history of it. Right. So I was really surprised to how, like, I was surprised to learn how old tarot cards were. Because when I thought about it, I thought it was like, oh, I bet it was just invented in the 70s or something. Kind of like how Ouija boards were. Like, they're not I always put those two together also. I Yeah, I don't know why I do. Like, but yeah, I I put them together. Right. Like, it's kind of the... It's a weird If you have tarot thing. cards, you have to have a Ouija board probably laying right. around somewhere. Yeah. Um, probably because it's like mixed with occultism and all of that, but... Devil work. No. Yeah. <laughs> but tarot cards are not. They're, they're not. Not, not at all. Yeah. So, uh, like I said, I was really surprised to learn how old tarot cards are. They... Let's see. The oldest deck <laughs> is known to date... From somewhere between 1441 and 1447. That's a long time ago. Hella long. The Visconti de Madroni deck. Please let me know if I mispronounced that. I'm positive (laughs) I I did. I can't help you with that. (laughs) (laughs) My pronunciation of everything is bad. I I didn't listen to any pronunciations of this either. I should have, but... Regardless, I'm not going to say it again. So, uh, It was the name of the noble family who owned it. It was commissioned by Filippo Maria Viscati, the Duke of Milan Ooh. at the time. It's so fancy. So I like to make a note that at the time, these cards had to be made by hand. Uh, each one oh, hand They're so painted. pretty. Yeah. So it was really like... It an wasn't art. a. It was an art, and it wasn't a lot of like, um, like poor people didn't have this kind of thing. It was for entertainment. So if you had time to entertain and money to put into making cards, you had to have been a pretty high status. So that's how they started, tarot cards as well as your regular deck of cards. So it's unlikely that this deck was used for divination. Practicing divination was unrighteous at the time. And the deck was most likely commissioned for the purpose of entertainment and playing complex card games, such as um, a game similar to Bridge. So not Bridge, but... Similar. Similar. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the structure of the cards. I think you have some card structure in here. Mm -hmm. but So mine probably won't run into yours. A deck of tarot cards is organized very similarly to a regular deck deck of cards. It has four suits with cards numbers 1 through 10 and a court set, uh, the king, queen, knight, and page. The major difference between a regular deck of cards and the tarot deck are that the tarot deck includes 22 symbolic picture cards. They don't respond with any suit, so they're kind of on their own. They are known as the major arcana. Is that right? Arcana is what I... How I've been pronouncing it, but okay. tomato, tomato, yeah. arcana, arcana. <laughs> perfect. So, <laughs> if you know how to pronounce this, let us know. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, these decks or the cards did have meaning and sometimes represented specific feelings. So, I really like this about the tarot cards. Um, an early form of prediction based on the card game was. Tarochi Appropriarity. Uh, that is Italian for something. <laughs> I'm gonna... Somebody find out for me. <laughs> um, a player was dealt random cards and a simple sentence or two was formed based on the meaning of the cards. Kind of like MASH. Does any, if you guys remember MASH. Like oh, I remember M- MASH. What was it? Mansion, Mansion apartment, apartment, shack, or house. There it is. Yeah. And then it was like who the first letter of your husband was gonna be. No, wasn't it like you had, so you got, you named four boys, um, uh-huh. four cars, yeah, four numbers, and so many kids you're going to have, and yeah. some asshole always did like 99. 16, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> something ridiculous, yeah, yeah. And, um, then, and then it was like how much money you're going to make, or, I don't I'm remember the it, details, and exactly, if you wanted to go like super crazy, you could add a bunch of stuff like that, and then. 
once you had all those, you'd be like, draw a circle and then however many rings the circle yeah, had. Yeah, you draw a line through it and you count how many times it crosses mm-hmm. the line. <clears throat> and then you go, you cross them out and you go one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. And yeah, then yeah, yeah. you're left with something and I'd always be like, not the shack, not the shack. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that is in, by definition, divination. If you think about it, oh, like yeah. even as friggin' middle school kids, we were trying to tell the future. So. Oh, I was telling futures left and right. <laughs> <laughs> Mal and Alex up mansion, in the bus. You mansion, <laughs> you shack. Sorry, you. Yeah, over there, shack, shacking it up. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I also mentioned that folded paper game we played in middle school. What is that? You know what I'm talking about? It's like, I couldn't do origami, but I could make those little folded things. We're doing it with our hands right now. (laughs) Wish you could see this. (laughs) It was like four pieces. You take a paper. I'm not going to explain how you fold it. Yeah, you fold it in half, fold it in half, make little triangles, put them in together, make them little flippy flaps so you can write things. That was a really good explanation of that. (laughs) I would eat, when I was really young, I made them into puppets and I'd be like, oh, it's going to eat your hand. Oh, yeah. But then when I got older, like middle school, I was like, oh, predicting more fortunes. Mm Mm-hmm. And Does Brian like me? Oh, let's unfold it. <laughs> no. All signs point to no. <laughs> Sorry, Brian. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's funny. Um, yeah, that me, was fun. So, okay. So they had an early game, sort of like that, with tarot cards, which we could probably do that now. It's just like medieval Krista and Alex. Like, so, Oh, man. They probably... <laughs> I can see this. <laughs> <laughs> We're in dresses and we're sitting at a desk and there's lit by candles and we're folding out cards. If I get ambitious enough on the Instagram, maybe you'll see a picture of this. (laughs) This is real. I think this should be a comic. Uh, That would be so cool. (laughs) So it's not taken seriously, though. It was meant to be humorous. Um, You can come up with some funny, funny, some very funny predictions. So as soon as one believes in the cards being capable, actually capable of predicting the future, it becomes then divination. So that's where the line was drawn, like, I think. Because there, there isn't a fine start to when tarot cards were used to predict things. Like, it's a slow fade into that. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't until roughly the 1780s in France and England that followers of the occult started using tarot cards to predict the future. Hmm. So that's they go back so, so long ago. Old the from the 1440s. I mean, that's the oldest deck of cards. And people that are still like using them a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. That's all I got, man. All right. So <laughs> I wrote down. There's 78 cards in a tarot, a traditional tarot deck, and 22 of them are the major. Arcana. 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 <laughs> Cards, which reflect spiritual lessons on life. And then there's 56 minor Arcana cards. Now I'm just overthinking how to say that don't, stupid word. Don't. It, it's like Arcana. Arcana, Arcana, whatever. Anyways, the 56 minor ones reflect day-to-day activities. Um, the 56 include cups, pentagrams, swords, and wands, and usually they'll be like a two of cups, a three of pentacles, seven swords. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I need to get a tarot deck after doing all of this. I'm gonna yeah. start tarotting it up. <laughs> you should have one. Yeah, I'm surprised you don't have an official one at this point. <gasps> Speaking, I don't have a tarot deck, but I do have an angel card deck, which is um, oracle cards, which I wasn't sure how closely they were related, but. They're pretty, they're not close, but they're the same idea. You both yeah. use intuition for tarot cards and for oracle cards. Mm-hmm. So if we have time at the end of all of this, maybe I'll read Krista's oracle cards. Oh, we're going to have time. Oh. <laughs> this just in, we've got time. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so you have. So the cups represent emotions and feelings. So if any of those, the cup cards come up. That's what you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. If the pentacles come up, it's dealing with material or possessions. Swords. Oh, I forgot. Swords Mm -hmm. are mind and consciousness. Mm -hmm. Wands are primal energy and spirituality. It describes your personality if any of the wand cards come up. Cups are water. Pentacles are earth. Swords are air. Wands are fire. And I have my little drawings of all of them. Those are cute. 
And so I have something to add. Add it. Okay. So the pentacles, mm-hmm. those used to be coins. Oh, that's cool. And then and so just, it wasn't. Huh? The pentacles remind me of like the demon stuff. That's where I start to get like kind of nervous. Uh, but, yeah, like, that's when I was younger. The, the so I guess like if you can imagine like the coins, the pentacle is a, a star within a circle, and a coin is a circle. Mm-hmm. Some it, it makes sense. That it had be just related. been like yeah, artistically changed into mm-hmm. a pentacle, but that's why it means material and possessions because it was coins. Yeah. And then, uh, so the wands, also, they used to be staves, uh, primal energy and spirituality. So, like... What's a stave? I guess it's another word for wand. Oh, okay. It's like... But, <laughs> also, I, was, I don't know how to draw a wand. Like, if you guys could see that, like... It looks like a tiny sword. That's good. It's <laughs> yeah. a dagger. No. <laughs> yeah. The one, I it drew two different ones, and the one on oh, the second page... Nicer. Yeah, this is Harry Potter status. Mm-hmm. Um, the first one, oof rough <laughs> but what else um i think that's all i remembered basically like what i wanted to add about the decks and the suits and whatnot is that they're not consistent through every single deck of tarot cards yeah you'll run into decks of car- tarot cards that have it depends on the name. artist yes and also um they come sort of like a what's the word like a additions so there'll be a, a different additions of tarot cards. Yeah, because some, that's what I was reading also, is that some have more than 78 cards. They'll have, it depends on the artist if they want to make more, if they're like, ooh, I'm feeling this. And some will have 80, some will have like 95. Mm, that's but a big deck. Usually they have 78. Mm hmm. Uh, interesting note, though. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a really indecisive person. The reason I like the idea of tarot is because it helps me realize what I've been wanting to do in my subconscious. Mm -hmm. So I really enjoyed this topic. Another thing. Oh, so while the first thing I ran across when looking this up was um, biddytarot.com. And it's this Australian woman. I have it right here. This Australian woman who I have a girl crush on now, <laughs> <laughs> she loves tarot and does readings and started a website dedicated to tarot and how to explore your intuitive self. She also has a podcast mm-hmm. that you should check out called the Biddy Tarot Podcast. It's so interesting. And that's Biddy, B-I-D-D-Y. Yes. Right, like, that's all, it's so Australian. I love it. Her name is Bridget, actually, but oh, she goes by Biddy. Okay. Oh, okay, cute. Oh. Um... Something she said that I liked, it, she says, It's my wish that tarot cards guide you to create life of peace, meaning freedom, and prosperity. Very cute. Mm-hmm. She also says that tarot is for everyone. Um, you don't have to be a psychic or a witch or anything. Yeah, yeah. Or, like, be interested. Or you can just have fun with it. Or, yeah. Because I am highly skeptical I have a tarot deck. <laughs> I just, I like looking at it. Like the pictures are really interesting. Um, and then I have a book that describes what each card is meant Ooh, for. That's good. Yeah. And when you lay it out or when you um, map it out the way the book kind of teaches you to, it's interesting to see the story you can come up with, with these cards. Mm-hmm. So that's why I like it. It helps you think of different possibilities. It opens up your mind. I really like that. And if you go to biddytarot.com, you can download a starter guide. Cute. And she recommends if you want to start getting into tarot, buy a deck, get a deck, get one from your friend, I don't know, <laughs> um, and re- learn a card a day. It'll take you a while, but you'll be familiar with the cards, get familiar with the deck that you have, and kind of meditate on each card, which sounds silly, but I like to... Well, I mean, like, it's like learning a new word. Mm-hmm. Like, because each card, it's just a picture. Like, it doesn't have the explanation of what it means on there. And you have to... Like, what is, like, yeah, that's what she said. When you read a card a day, you have to figure out what that card means to you. Yeah. So that's how you're able to confidently read tarot to others, read their tarot, or read it for yourself. You'd be like, oh, this is what this card means. Like, and you create your own meaning for it, kind mm-hmm. of. There is a actual meaning for yeah it, but. i mean there's tons of books on meanings of what all the cards are and they're all over the web and i'm sure that some of them you know 
count like contradicts each other but that's kind of the beauty of it is that tarot is a way for you to look at your problems outside of the context of yourself so you can look at different pictures and um, put your own feelings and emotions like into it sort of but also get out something different Another thing um, from Biddy's podcast, number 85, with Dr. Lisa Frinkel, PhD. Um, <laughs> turns out I have two girl crushes on this podcast. <laughs> and why didn't I go to the University of Oregon? Like, it's pretty much Hogwarts, you guys. <laughs> like, the there's but a teacher why? who teaches tarot, and she's the dean. She has a P- what? Yeah. She's the dean of University of she Oregon? Okay, she teaches, she loves tarot, and she's, like, at a tarot um, conference with Biddy, mm-hmm. and that's why she's on this podcast, mm-hmm. and her, the podcast was about teaching mindfulness with tarot, and it teaches you how to be present in the moment, and, like, how to read the cards, but also just be in the moment. I know I just said that, but it was a really good podcast, and she's super cool, and I love Oregon. Of course, of of course, course. University of Oregon would have a freaking tarot class. I would go to University of Oregon if I didn't feel like such an old lady there, because it's probably a bunch of kids. It's (laughs) Oregon. It's it's true. It doesn't really matter. (laughs) They love everyone. I love Oregon. Um. What else you got there? So, another thing that goes along with tarot is asking the right questions if you're gonna have a tarot reading i'm sure your tarot um expert will tell you or like what kind of questions you need to ask but i was reading through some of them and you don't want to ask yes or no questions like the tarot cards aren't going to be like okay krista this is what's going to happen and this is what you need to do oh my god that'd be so great you just have to answer you have to post the question positively Because this is all enlightening and positive, so you need to be happy and um, no yes or no's. Some examples are, what do I need to know about, said, what do I need to know about work? Or what do I need to achieve to live a happier life? Mm -hmm. How can I improve on my workout schedule? I don't know. Stuff like that. So it's not like, will I get the job? Yes. So an example I have here is they said, this is the example of what not to ask. Will I get married this year? Instead, you should say, what do I need to know about getting married this year? That's good. Okay. Remember the question that we were told never to ask the tarot cards? Yeah. (laughs) So on Biddy's website, she has a list of what not to ask. I'm not gonna pull up the website and read them all to you, but one of my favorites was never ask the tarot cards if you're pregnant. You can go (laughs) ahead and buy a pregnancy test and find out in two to three minutes. That's the worst possible question you could ask. Why the hell would you find a tarot expert and be like, am I pregnant? Um, so what's the situation? Am I knocked up? What are we dealing with? Oh (laughs) my god. (laughs) Okay, well, based on this advice, how would you pose that question differently to the tarot deck? How? What do I need to know about parenting? There you go. (laughs) That's good. Or, you know, maybe something like... What do I need to achieve to not get pregnant this year? No. (laughs) (laughs) Um, How can I improve on not getting pregnant? (laughs) <laughs> someone needs to go back to sex ed <laughs> uh you need to read a book you know <laughs> let me steer you in the direction of planned parenthood yeah they'll educate you <laughs> um i think that's all i got krista oh boy we really gotta get more information what are we at <laughs> what? we're at 24 minutes I did so much. Oh, it's okay. I could read you. So before I did all this research, and no, it doesn't seem like a lot, but it, it was. <laughs> um, I wrote down what my first thoughts on or so it wouldn't like, I wouldn't be like, oh yeah, I totally knew tarot was okay. Like I, oh, that's a good so idea. it wouldn't yeah interrupt what I was thinking before I researched. So my first thoughts before research, dot, dot, dot. I remember being young and kind of interested in tarot cards, horoscopes, and crystals. 
I had a friend who told me that those things were evil and the devil's work. I was young and dumb and not confident in my spirituality enough to explore these things and decided not to go there for a long time. I stayed away, but slowly I came back. And that's when I already read this part, but I'm an indecisive person and I like stuff like this because it opens up my subconscious and I'm like, oh, I didn't even realize I should be focusing on this kind of stuff or like, yeah, I don't know. I can't think of an example right now, but oh, I'm not doing good at work. Maybe I need to focus on relaxing more outside of work to mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I stuff get, like that. I love yeah, it. Yeah, I get what you mean. It's just like, like we talk about crystals and stuff. We're going to save it for another episode. Crystals but, are going to be so awesome. Um, Tarot deck, like it's to me at least. Um, and I guess we're going into really the end of it, which is what do I think? Or what do you think? It's not, it in no way will predict the future. <laughs> like it's totally random. The cards. It's not magic. It's not magic. Yeah. To me, the cards, they don't know you. They're inanimate objects. But There's, your tarot card, your tarot card expert is going to get to know you. Yeah. But okay. So this is where the skeptic in me is going to come out a little bit. Okay. To me, the deck the deck knows nothing. That tarot reader, they're going to know enough about you in that minute to give you something that you're going to like. And I think that's where the magic really lies. <laughs> and it's like, I... Connecting with an intuitive person. Yeah, that's nice. That'll make you feel good. And is it the future? And is it some magical energy flowing between you and the tarot reader in the deck? No. It's not. But that's just me. Uh, It doesn't make it a bad thing. It just makes it something that you probably shouldn't invest a lot of money and time into. Like, (laughs) this is life or death. Like, don't hire a tarot reader for yourself every day of your life. It's like when um, official leaders have, what are they, astrologists? Right? They do? Some of them. Oh. Like, it's just, that's bonkers to me. (laughs) That's just... That's garbage. Like it you need facts, man. Yeah, yeah. You're Just running focus, a country. Focus on the facts. Like um, the stars have nothing to do with it. Kind of reminds me of John Edwards. You remember that guy that like uh, talked to yeah the dead. Yep. Yeah. I. That's kind of like where I am skeptic wise. Like I'm like, oh, is it just somebody being like, like you come to a tarot card reader and you're crying and she's like, obviously you've been through. Yeah, <laughs> or exactly. the cards are telling me maybe you broke up with somebody. I think you need to stay away from those kind of people. Yeah, those because people are taking your money and taking advantage. Shows. Yeah, mm-hmm. and and also anyone that can talk to the dead, I don't believe them at all. Talking to you, John Edwards, <laughs> <laughs> if you're listening, <laughs> that'd be pretty amazing. But yeah, no, John, never mind. You're a fan girl. You're here. not. You're not like, a fan girl. No, <laughs> I'm just thinking of like the magnitude our podcast would have to get to to get to John N. Words. <laughs> like, <laughs> he's like not even cool anymore. He's, he's totally really listening not. to our podcast. <laughs> he probably would now. <laughs> um. So guess I, what? I, what? I think we have time for an oracle card reading. Dude, we do. Do you want to talk about what you think about tarot? Because I can go on and I feel like on. I kind of already did, but I'll say it again. Okay. <clears throat> tarot card. I, I love tarot cards because it's bringing out your intuition. And it's just part of that hippie lifestyle that I love. Like connecting with people on an energy level. I love it. I love connecting. <laughs> well said. I'm buying some tarot cards. Oh, I need... <sighs> I mean, mine were pretty inexpensive. They were like $15. So. There's this beautiful deck that I follow on Instagram. Oh, do you feel follow like the deck? The I follow the artist who makes the deck. Oh, okay. Very cool. Yeah. Oh, I'm on the wrong Instagram. <laughs> I've got to look it up and tell everyone because it's so beautiful. And every time... Oh, and if I was... um following not following i can't just meow yeah she did is she in the garage again no she's outside yeah um i was i had the moon box i was subscribed to the moon yeah, box yeah, 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 yeah. and they would give you a tarot card every month and it was from this deck so i have a, like a couple of the cards <laughs> sorry everybody i'm searching 
Star Child Tarot. There it is. Look it up. Look it up. It's beautiful decks. Look at that crystal. It is really pretty. Oh, wow. Uh, or if you get Moonbox. You'll get a deck every month. Mm-hmm. No, oh, you'll get a card. One card. Oh, never they mind. They tease you. You'll so that's why a- I only have, like, four cards. I wonder if they never... They'll never give you the full deck. Like, they'll give you repeats. No, I think if you have, like, the... You have to be subscribed for 78 months. No, like... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> There's like, so you can get the $10 box, which I had because I'm not a baller, or you can get like the $30 box, and then at the end of the year, they give you the whole tarot deck. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, it's a perk of being like a deluxe member. Of the moon box. So, Star Child. Future Tarot cards. (gasps) Moon box, do you want to sponsor us? (laughs) That would be really nice. Oh, that'd be so cool. Let's, let's. let's I'd cry happy tears if that happened. Like. I'm going to get a hold of them. Okay. <laughs> Not right I thought now. you were like gonna stand up. You're like, be right back. <laughs> no, I need to take my sweater off. Okay. And I need to read. Okay. Your so we're gonna parts. have my reading. Is, yes. Are what? Do I have to ask a question? Yeah. Or? So what? Think of a question. Remember what my what okay. asking the right questions tidbit. Do was. we want to ask one that might involve our listeners, like? Ooh, I like that. What should I know about the future of this podcast? <gasps> I like it. Ooh, guys, what is what is it going to say? I need to shuffle the cards, and this yeah. takes me a little bit because they're like big cards. The deck oh, I'm man, using. They're, really big. they're like for blind people. <laughs> they're like those jumbo cards that you buy for your grandparents <laughs> yeah. so they can play cards. I love those. <laughs> they're so funny. <laughs> um, so... I'm using the Earth Magic deck, uh, Oracle Cards. There's 48 cards in this deck, and it comes with a guidebook, and it's from Stephen Farmer. Thanks, Stephen Farmer. They are really pretty. Yeah, they are really pretty. That's why I was drawn to tarot cards at all. Like, it's not something that I... so gorgeous. Yeah. They're really cool looking. They have cool pictures, and there's a little story about the fool. All the Arcana cards, the major Arcanas, there's a story about it. If you order them how they're supposed to be ordered oh, before we do this another weird thing was so we were researching this mm-hmm. and wednesday it was yesterday mm-hmm. um i had a client come in for a massage and she was like we're just sitting there or we we're sitting there i was massaging her <laughs> but she was like oh what do you know about tarot cards and i was like what did you how'd she are you know? out of my mind because like right before i went to the massage i was like looking up stuff for this podcast and i was like this lady's reading my mind and we we're like talking about crystals she's she's real cool oh, and wow. yeah but it was just so weird because she's like tell me everything you know about tarot cards i was like actually there's 78 cards in a deck oh, and there's 22 my- like i like went off <laughs> And she's like, I knew you'd know about him. And I was just like, yeah, I'm totally, because I always have info like that. But, so but it was just so random. And Okay, we're still shuffling. And they're really big cards. <laughs> they need to be thoroughly shuffled. We need the best answers for Ooh, our there's, listeners. There's your kitty. She's okay. all right. Are you good, girl? You good, Zocat? She doesn't care about us. Uh, she really doesn't, but she's pretty. <laughs> I want a kitty. All right. Okay. Ask your question again. Should I touch the cards? Sure. Okay. Put your energy in there. I'm doing it right now. Look at all this intuition. This is exciting content. Okay, guys. What's the future of this podcast? What should I know about the future of this podcast? Cards? What do we need to focus on? What is yeah. the future yeah, of yeah, the yeah, podcast? Yeah. yeah, it's like get better equipment. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, wow, I've never seen this card before. <laughs> The microphone. The <laughs> That's what I meant. Hang on, speaker. No speaker. We need speakers too. We need it all. All right, here we go. First Waterfall, Ooh. effortless. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, yeah. River movement. Oh boy. It's probably gonna be like, quit moving Death. your heads. No. Yeah. <laughs> and rainbow blessings. blessings. Oh. Effortless movement and blessings. That's so, really nice. Then we go to the guidebook because i can't remember all the things for these I mean, cards like 90 of them. we're gonna go with waterfall first yep don't go chasing waterfalls no listen to <laughs> that's <the> exactly rivers <gasps> <laughs> wow you guys yeah it got is- real up in here real quick 
Oh man, looking at it's really like watery and like sky. Yeah, like water and sky. Okay, waterfalls, effortless. You have come to the edge of your comfort zone <laughs> and find yourself fighting to resist moving past that perceived perception of who you are, how you can be, or what you can do. Spirit is asking you to step beyond the edge and allow yourself to do so with the ease rather than struggle. Yes, at times physical exertion is necessary, but when performed with fluidity and grace, even when the task seems daunting, you'll find that the movement moves you effortlessly. Approach the present situation or relationship with awareness and grace. Do not try to make it effortless. That just creates more strain. The key word here is to allow. This is not a time to fight or to surrender to the will of spirit. Even if you are being asked to let go completely and tumble into the brink of creation itself, you will find the waters there to be ultimately still and calm. Keep your focus on your solar plexus and your breath, breathing through any tension. Relaxing and yielding to the movement that is occurring at any given moment makes life effortless. That was just so nice to listen to. <laughs> like, that, I it, just it, feel so calm uh, when I were, do this. Oh, there are so many calming words. Like, it really draws you in and is like, relax. I can do this. Yeah, it's so positive. Yeah, and just be effortless and don't. I like how it was like, be effortless. Don't try to be effortless. <laughs> like That was the just, last podcast. I was like, dude, I totally got this. And I like did like not much research. And I was like, don't got this. Don't got this. <laughs> abort. Abort. <laughs> yeah, serious. But I liked that it said stepping outside of your comfort zone. Because I'm not a great speaker. Right. I mean, I like to talk. And that's why I love talking to Krista. And I like talking about stuff we yeah. research. Or not research, but like. Just, like, stuff we're interested in. So that's why I wanted to do this. Yeah. No. And and I just... That was a good card. I just like weird topics. So that's why I wanted <laughs> to do this. <laughs> <clears throat> the next one, river, movement. Fighting or blocking the flow of your life force can lead you to feeling spiritually void and disconnected from source. Just like the metaphor of the river, it does not work to force or fight this compelling movement. When you simply pay attention and observe the flow, it becomes easier to navigate your experiences and see what lies ahead, or at least get a sense of what it what it is to come by the ever changing geographic ge- geography. <laughs> geographic. You got it. Okay. <laughs> that unfolds and as you cruise along. Your resistance is hampering your ability to make a choice in this matter. Ooh. Surrender to the movement of life. Be grateful and you will see the signs along the shore and in the river itself that offer offer you clues about the direction of your egoist self is to be making go with the flow. Is more than a trite aphorism here. It is essential that you do so now. Breathe, relax, and you will know. Very good. Again, just that water water theme. And the last one, rainbow. Blessings. Blessings. It sounds so cheesy, but they're not always super cheesy. Like, once you read them, you're like, oh, okay, that wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. <laughs> <clears throat> so it says, for Rainbow, the storm has passed, and it is time to enjoy the refreshing beauty of the cycle. Even though it has been difficult to appreciate any sense of pur- purposefulness in what you have endured lately, you can now, as they say, count your blessings. Do not just look at the brighter side, adhering to some academic mantra that has no heart or depth, but do so slowly and with genuine gratitude that is expressed up close and personal. This ever-evolving process of life itself is a blessing, an opportunity to exist as a human being on Earth. The planet is a beautiful garden, even if it does not always appear to be so. Sometimes it is only when you look back at the memory of an experience that you can truly see a blessing that has come from them bless your difficult or painful experiences and let them go oh man so here's what i got from it uh the first one effortless it's like just allow things to happen river is movement keep pushing through any barriers that come up you're like a river rivers don't stop for anybody and then blessing when all is said and done I guess be nothing. grateful. Be grateful for it. Like, don't expect everything good to happen to you. But when good things happen, just be thankful for them. 
That is I, so nice. <laughs> I love this. And imagine once I start doing tarot and I can tell us more. Yeah. Oracle cards, I feel like, are just the... It's like skimming the surface. Yeah, whereas really. tarot is so much more in depth. And with, or like these cards, like there isn't really a bad one, you know, but. Same with tarot. There's, there can be bad cards, but you have to phrase everything positively. But there isn't never, there's never going to be a time. And this is also kind of like the skeptic view of tarot card. Like tarot card is, tarot cards aren't going to tell you, oh, then the next year you're going to die. Or, yeah. You know, like, that was one of the questions not to ask. Yeah. <laughs> Don't ask that. And they won't tell you. Um, because really like you're in control of your destiny. So if it takes some cards giving you some positive feedback for you to feel better and then make better choices through your life, go for it. Like do it. Practice reading cards. Do it. Yeah. Uh, another reason I like this earth magic Oracle deck is because, um, before I kind of started looking into tarot, um, I was doing a couple's massage class at this place in Richland called Lotus of the Moon and the girls that own the shop there were like, oh, do you want us to read your oracle cards? And I was oh. like, what are oracle cards? <laughs> yes. And I was like, is it like tarot? And they were kind of like, eh, kind of, but not. Uh, they kind of told me a little bit about tarot. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was going through my divorce. Like, I just started going through my divorce. And the cards I got were very positive. And I hadn't told these ladies that I was going through a divorce, but it was just like, I can't remember what cards I I got dance and one of them was the dance one talked about even though life can be sad you have to dance and stay positive and it was just like that's so nice and and I don't know I think these might be a little bit fooey but at the same time anything to make your life a little better yeah and during the sad times is always good yep yep foo or no foo foo or no foo just Relax. Just chill out, really. Is that going to be the title of this episode? Foo or no foo? Foo or no foo. <laughs> I do like it. I really like don't ask the oh, cards if you're pregnant. That was, <laughs> like, that was, I like that. Like, who the hell is asking? <laughs> cards, is there a baby up in here? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you haven't been with a man in like a year. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> no girl go not... go get laid no yeah. <laughs> cards aren't gonna say that either but well, also yeah well if you want your oracle deck red if you want what is it called <laughs> it sounded dirty i know never <laughs> mind <laughs> no if you want i was gonna tell I... people to message alex <gasps> on instagram if oh you my want... goodness <laughs> if you want me to read some positive outlook um from my oracle earth magic deck Message me. Tell me a little bit about your situation. Don't ask if you're pregnant because I'm going to tell you go buy a pregnancy test, girl. <laughs> um, She'll but take it. some advice from this podcast. Um, listen to the part asking the right questions. Mm-hmm. And I'll read you some positive outlook on your life. Yeah. You can email us at thesensecast Ooh, at gmail.com. Uh, so how about let's conclude and talk about our goals for this next week. Krista, what are your goals? I just, I, I need to go to Transition Festival. Get that goal is happening. Go happen. Uh, then fun. I need to come home and recover from Transition <laughs> Festival. Um, on Monday, this will be out and I'll let you know how I fare. Uh, I'm so excited. Yeah, it'll be really fun. Um, but then after that, like, I just need to focus better, like, eating healthier, uh, waking up earlier. Getting better sleep. Are you still going to be on the same schedule? Like, I feel like waking up earlier isn't a good goal if you're going to be on the weird schedule. I'm off at work at 11 at the latest. Okay, that's Every not bad. day. So if I get to bed by midnight, I should be able to wake up by 8. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So why am I sleeping in until noon? Like... <laughs> That sounds so nice, though. <laughs> I mean, it's nice, but it really eats up a lot of your day. Like, yeah. I could get a lot done. Um... Uh, and so, yeah, that's just my goals. Kind of just general, like, self-care and nothing too serious goal. Just good goals, though. Yeah, self-care is always a good goal. Yeah. What's your goals? My goals are I need to make the logo or the cover art for this podcast. Yeah, though. new art. New art. I've been stuck. Like, I've tried making it a few times, and I kind of want to paint it. 
Ooh. Yeah. Okay. I keep trying to do colored pencils and I don't like it. And I'm like, I think I need to bust out the paints. You're doing the glow show, right? <gasps> Ooh, that was, yeah, that's my second one. I'm okay. doing the glow show also in Richland at Consummate Space. I will be doing, it's called Henna Glam or AKA White Henna. And Very cool. And it's a black light show. So it's going to, uh, everyone's henna is going to glow in the dark and it's going to be beautiful. What right. day is that again? Saturday. Shoot. I, Dang. Okay. September. Yeah. I can't think of the date. Today's the 21st. It's going to be the 23rd then. Oh, September 23rd. Confluent it, Space, the it, glow show. It'll be in the past when this comes out. But... Oh. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> I'll remind everybody on the Instagram page. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so, this Twitter. Also... Yeah. This no, 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 no. But you can tweet it still. Okay. And then, like, so, and put it on Instagram and the Facebook and all the other places you can find us. Also, update on the chess piece for my friend. Haven't done it yet, but I practiced on myself and did a chess piece. Oh my god. Wow! Krista can see it, but not everyone else. And it's kind of uneven, but it is my first That's attempt cool. at a chess piece, and it was fun. I love That's Hannah. like, it's kind of like, I've always really admired Rihanna's tattoo. <gasps> I love Rihanna's oh, tattoo. Oh gosh. It's like that, kind of, it's like under the breasts of a lady and it's like kind of goes under and in between it so beautiful so gorgeous like i, I can't wait to do my friend's now. chest piece or mm-hmm. it's like under boob piece i don't know what you'd call it chest piece sounds more elegant yeah um i'm gonna plug myself go ahead dude alex Hennera <laughs> on instagram if you want to go see all my henna artwork um post about i mean this podcast doesn't have many followers yet, but you can post about the on, podcast on Alex Hennera. Yeah, and I'm going to do both. I'm gonna check out Alex Hennera, and I'm going to post on Alex Hennera tonight. And it's yeah. just fun to say. I to say know. Once. Alex Hennera. Ah! <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I can't. I, I love it. Hennera. Hennera. Maybe it'll be a new, like, your own style of henna. Oh, I Hennera. eventually... This is like bigger than weekly goal, guys. Oh boy! Um, I want to be the Eastern Washington distributor of henna. Yeah. There's a girl. I kind of copied her, but I kind of didn't before I found her. But there's a mm-hmm. girl in Seattle who sells henna on her website. Like she makes it for people, or she also gets it from like Pakistan and stuff, and like oh, sells the powder to people. Okay. Her name is Sarah Hennera. <laughs> But I, I found her after I made up Alex Hennera, so now I just feel like a fake, but I it's still like it. It's not too late if you want to mix up your branding. You can. But I like Alex Hennera. Okay, then keep it. I'm going to. Okay. But it's just a little awkward because she's in Washington and Seattle and I'm like East but Coast. The, yeah, but I mean. Or not East Coast, Eastern. East side. East side. There's no coast here. But you can, you know, it's just, you're Alex Hennera. That's a different thing. Total different thing. Different you can't style. help my name. Yeah. yeah. And, and it sounds like Alexandra. That's what Exactly. I get it, guys? <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, that would be. That would be really cool if I had an online store and sold all my henna stuff. Yes. Yeah, man. That's the dream. It'll get there. I just have takes time. I would the cards have a lot of good things to say about it. I was it. just going to say that. Like, <laughs> okay, Oracle cards, tell me. <laughs> yeah. I think, like, definitely with tarot and, like, don't do it all the time. Like, no, just have fun with it. Yeah. And it's not something you can abuse, but... You're definitely, like, you can ask all the questions in the world. You gotta make your own reality happen to exactly. you guys. Exactly. You are Get the... your life. Yeah. <laughs> Get your life. <clears throat> yeah, I don't need to ask cards about this. I'm gonna be a henna expert up in here. Mm-hmm. You already know. I'm getting too sassy. Oh, but this should end. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta end this. <laughs> we gotta go. <laughs> okay. Until next time, guys, yeah. for episode four. Episode four. Watch oh out gosh. for it. But watch out for it. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> but, uh, sh- oh, terrible. Goodbye. <laughs> Here we go. Have a good night. Have a wonderful day. Bye, guys. Bye.